Welcome to this eBus learning module in Solutions Plus. My name is Gunnar Olin and I'm program manager for electrification at Lindholmen Science Park in Gothenburg, Sweden. I will tell you a few a little bit about a few eBus charging use cases we have done here in Gothenburg. We have worked with eBus development in Gothenburg for many years now and Volvo introduced the first hybrid buses in 2010. Then in 2013 they introduced plug-in hybrid buses that were charged with high power charging via Pantograph. In 2015 the Electricity Collaboration launched the full electric buses on line Route 55 and then in 2018 we showcased high capacity articulated e-buses. When it comes to charging e-buses we have different ways to do this. We have depot charging and we have opportunity charging and both these charging methods could be is our uh, stationary charging that is when the bus stands still and then we have dynamic charging. This presentation focuses on the first two ones, depot charging and opportunity charging, and maybe also a combination of these two. When it comes to the connecting the charger to the vehicle, we have two main ways. Either is manual connection, and then it's mainly used in the depot when you have uh, time to do this, and you have the automatic connection when you want to do it quickly, and that is mainly used for opportunity charging on route but it's also applicable in the depot if you want to automize that process. For the automatic connection there could be different ways to do that but uh, let's just talk about manual or automatic connection. Let's look into depot charging and the fundamentals of depot charging. If you see the image here you can see the state of charge is going down uh, with the number of trips that you are running without charging and then eventually you will charge the bus and that you will do in the depot. Charging is then done overnight or during longer breaks, especially between peak hours. Charging is done at lower power levels, normally below 100 kilowatt and over longer time. You need quite large batteries uh, to run buses with depot charging otherwise you need to go to the depot very often and you need you get a high and centralized power need in the depot typically during the night this image shows the battery energy level of a number of buses in a fleet simulation each line represents the state of charge of one bus if you charge this bus once or twice in the depot you can see that the charge level goes up again and you can then uh, reduce the battery size. In order to do this in a productive way, it's very important that the location of the depot is close to where the buses operate. Otherwise, you will run to the depot without passengers back and forth and lose money over the day. On the other hand, there's no need of charging outside the depot, so you get a flexibility in the operation and it's easy to plan. Okay, now let's look at opportunity charging. Uh, this means that the, charge, the bus will charge every time it stops at an end station. So it will stop there and charge during shorter breaks and then it will run again. But it could also stop at close to an end station for longer breaks and charge if that is the case. Charging will be done at higher power levels. In Gothenburg we have tried up to 450 kilowatts but it's possible to go even higher, like 600 kilowatts. You need smaller batteries when you charge them often, and most of the power is supplied to the vehicle while in operation outside the depot, so you get a geographically distributed power need. And the power need in the depot will be limited during the night. This graph shows a fleet simulation of opportunity charged buses. You can see the battery energy, le energy level is going up and down and kept uh, within a certain interval. Opportunity charging is suitable for example when the depot is too far from where buses shall operate. And, uh, but it's more complex to operate uh, and you get less flexibility in the operation. But it is technically possible to run opportunity charge buses 24 7. 
Now let's go into the eBus use cases in Gothenburg. We have two demonstration cases, the Route 55 and Route 16, and we have two deployment cases that I will talk a little bit about. The first use case in Gothenburg with full electric buses was Route 55. It connected two campuses, going through the city centre of Gothenburg, a 7.6 km long bus route. We had opportunity charging at each end stop and the battery size and the charging was dimensioned so if one of the charges was out of, out of order, the bus would, buses would uh, operate anyway. They were charged at the charging stations for 3 to 6 minutes with up to 300 kilowatts. We had one bus leaving every 10 minutes and the buses uh, were in operation between June 15 and December 2020. Route 55 was a direct result of the Electricity Corporation in which a number of stakeholders and partners uh, took part. Here you can see the bus entering the indoor bus stop uh, with the charging station in the roof. This bus stop was built in order to showcase that it's possible with electric buses to build the city in a different way to make public transport more attractive in part where the climate is challenging sometimes. If you want to read more about the Electricity Corporation, click on the link below. In the next phase of Electricity, high capacity articulated buses 18.7 meters long were showcased on Route 16. These buses were also opportunity charged at end stops. And we power was used up to 450 kilowatts. Also, the buses had larger batteries than before. The batteries were designed and um, dimensioned so that the buses were able to run through the peak with limited charging. And then again, the state of charge could be increased between peaks with increased charging time. These buses were in operation between June 18 and December 2020. Based on the good results from Route 55 and Route 16, the Public Transport Authority wanted to implement electric buses more in, in the more general regular operation. And the first step was to do this on Bus Route 60, which is a very busy city bus route. It's 8.5 kilometers long. It runs through the city center of Gothenburg and uh, ever, uh, there's a bus coming every four to six minutes. All in all, 30 electric buses were introduced, including the routes 59, 60 and 62. Uh, four opportunity charging stations were built, three at the end station and then one also in the depot, which you can see on the image. So in the depot we have a combination of, of high power charging via pantograph and low power AC charging. And we will probably see more of this in the future, especially the automatic connection of, of buses in the depots and where the pantographs then could charge with high or low power depending on how long the bus stays in the depot. The last use case is from December 2020. It was a large scale deployment with 145 high capacity articulated buses taken into operation on December 13. These buses were then on 34 different bus routes. They were using, they are using 19 opportunity charging stations and they are based in four different depots. The 145 buses in this case are opportunity charged at end stops. When the buses, when all buses are not needed to operate, for example, between peak hours or uh, during longer driver breaks, they could also charge at opportunity charging stations close to the operation. In the depot, the buses are charged with 60 or 120 kilowatts. And a reason for opportunity charging in this deployment was to minimize productivity losses because of the depot locations that is too far from where the buses operate. The use cases I've presented have all been based on opportunity charging.
but which strategy is the best? There is no simple answer. When it comes to depot charging, it's more similar to diesel operation. The depot installation is normally less complicated. It's not route dependent, so it's easy to plan. But you have a range limitation. You need to carry more usable energy on board. You need high power in single location in the depot. And there's a redundancy aspect also. All charging is done in the depot. So what happens if you get a power loss in the depot? When it comes to opportunity charging or charging on route, you have no daily range limitation. You can run 24 seven if you like. You have less usable energy that needs to be uh, carried in the batteries. The power and the energy need is distributed. But on the other hand, you need to install these chargers in public environment, which could be very difficult. You need to maintain them and you need you get less flexibility in your operation so there's no simple answer here to conclude we see that the overall trend is that depot charging is increasing in preference but opportunity charging have its merits and is the preferred solution in some cities maybe a combination of the charging strategies would be a good solution for example if you would use high and low power charging in the depot via pantograph and also establish micro depots close to where buses operate to reduce productivity losses thanks for listening and good luck